Maria Chiaberta, and I am joining you here from the Burpee Museum of Natural History. The Burpee Museum is located in Rockford, Illinois, and we are here up on our third floor in our Windows to Wilderness exhibit. And this exhibit features animals that are native to Illinois, and today we are going to talk to you about some of the turtles that are native to Illinois. There are 17 different species that are actually native to Illinois, and we care for five of them here at the museum. So I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna grab some out, take a look at them together to meet our fun little friends. Okay, hi guys, and I'm joining you with Mr. T. So Mr. T is our box turtle, and he's gonna be one of our native terrestrial turtles of Illinois. So terrestrial is just a word that means that he mostly lives on land. So he's going to live in habitats that are prairies and woodlands. Um, and he's a really special turtle because box turtles have this really cool ability. So if I take him and I poke towards his head, you're gonna see that he takes all his arms and his legs and his heads and he puts it inside. And if we flip up to see the bottom of his shell, there's actually going to be this line right here. And this line is a hinge in his shell. So if I poke his head again, you can see that this part of his shell starts to move upwards and it completely closes him off. So he is completely safe in his shell when he does this. And he's actually the only turtle of Illinois that can have this ability. It's something very special to him. Another really special part of his shell is this high shape to it. So if we look, it's got this really big curve, right? And this curve is going to help him when he's moving around on the land. So the curve is to protect him from ever getting stuck laying flat on his back. If he starts to tip over, this curve is going to make it so that he just keeps rolling. He's never gonna get stuck flat on his back, which means he's not going to be stuck there waiting for predators to come and get him. So having this high arch is something that's actually protective for him from his predators. Our turtle here is pretty old. He's about 70 years old, and he's used to being handled pretty frequently, but because he's so old, he doesn't always like to be handled, which is why he hides in his shell when I'm trying to touch his face. And this is Mr. T. So this is going to be our painted turtle. So if we look, he's going to have a shell that's pretty different than Mr. T's shell, right? His shell is going to be a lot flatter. And that's because this turtle is semi-aquatic, meaning he lives in the water sometimes. Um, and this guy really prefers waters that are going to be like rivers and marshes and low waters. Um, and his shell, even though it doesn't protect him from rolling over onto his back, it still serves a really good purpose. For one, it's going to be a defense from predators. No one wants to bite down on a really hard shell, right? They want something squishy. So it's gonna protect all the squishy parts inside. But it's also actually attached to his body. So these shells, they can never get rid of. They're not like crustaceans. They're actually attached, and they're attached where your backbone would be. So if you feel on your back, in the middle of your back, there's gonna be a lot of bumpy bones. That's your backbone, and that's where the shell attaches to a turtle. So when I pet him, he can actually feel it because it's part of his body. His shell is made of something that we call scoots. And scoots are made of keratin, which is the same exact stuff that our fingernails and our hair is made of. So when we pet him, it feels really similar to if you were scratching your own nail with your nail. That's what he's going to feel. And he's got some really interesting markings on his shell and on his body. So we can see that he is yellow that goes through his face, through his legs, and a little bit on his shell and on his little tail here at the back. He's going to have a bit of a longer tail than Mr. T did because he's aquatic and that helps to streamline his body when he's swimming. And this yellow, and it can also be in a red color, is going to be what is identifying about painted turtles. So if you see one outside that has these yellow markings or markings that look the same in red, you know you've seen a painted turtle. Okay, so this one here is our Blanding's turtle. And like our painted turtle, he's going to have some distinctive features. And his feature is actually the bright yellow color of his neck. So Blanding's turtles can be found in Northern Illinois in the upper half of Illinois, the top 50%. Um, but they're actually something that's really hard to find, and that's because these species are endangered. So these turtles really prefer clear, shallow waters, and clear waters are kind of hard to come by these days. And because they're hard to come by, these guys are having a hard time finding a home. And the fact that they can't find a home is what makes them endangered. So the Burpee Museum is actually part of a conservation effort to keep these guys alive, so that's why we take care of them here. 
Um, but it is really important for us to make sure that we're caring for all of our ponds and our lakes and our rivers outside near our homes too. That way these guys can live out in the wild and not only here at the museum. Okay, so this is a red-eared slider. Um, one of the things that you'll notice about aquatic turtles is first of all, if we can get him to put his leg out, he has, you want to put your leg out? He has webbed feet, which allow him to swim really well. His shell is not hinged. So when we look at like other turtles, like the box turtle who lives predominantly on land, even the Blandings turtle, which is kind of this really cool mixture of the two, um, they have like a hinge on their shell right there and they can snap the entire thing shut. Oh, you're gonna open your mouth for them? Come on out. Um, but he does not have that, nor do the painted turtles. He's called a red-eared slider because as you can see near where we would assume his ears are, are these red stripes. So that's where that name comes from. And he's um, not quite full grown. These guys do get bigger. It's a pretty big species of turtle, not, certainly not as big as something like a snapping turtle. Um, but he gets bigger and, you know, he can pull his whole body in, even his little tail, because he doesn't want any predators to get at that meat, but he can't snap it shut like some of the other turtles that we see. Um, he has a beak with no teeth, um, but he does eat a lot of living things. So he'll eat fish, snails, um, pretty much worms, anything he can get his hands on. He's an omnivore, so he'll also eat plant material. Um, and that's what makes these guys such great survivors because they can live in virtually any environment and find something to eat. He'll even eat like, pieces of hot dog. Um, a lot of people have these guys as pets. They're not the easiest pet because they're, um, when they go to the bathroom, it's very liquidy. So your tank becomes very full of excrement and poop. So you do need a very good filter for these guys. But you'll see them basking on the rivers and the lakes in our local area. And as soon as they get spooked, they go boop right in. And you know, he, much like a lot of these turtles, have these really long necks. So they can be almost completely submerged while their two little nostrils are sticking out. And I think the Blanding's turtle shows off their neck really well. Okay, and then over here we're going to have our snapping turtle. So snapping turtles are mostly aquatic. They really don't like to be on land a whole lot. The only time you're really going to see a snapping turtle on land is when he's moving from one wetland to another. So if he's moving in between rivers or ponds or lakes, that's when you're going to see him. We do advise you to never approach a snapping turtle on land as they are known to be very aggressive on land. Hence their name, snapping turtle. These guys are going to be higher up on the food chain than any of the other turtles that we've looked at. All of the turtles we've looked at today are omnivores, meaning they eat both plants and animals. But this guy is going to eat the largest animals of them all. Most of our other turtles, the animals they eat are going to be invertebrates like bugs and flies, but this guy can actually eat small fish and even what we feed him at the museum sometimes are small mice. And if you look at him, he's going to have a lot of algae growing on his shell, which is going to make his shell look a little different from some of the other shells that we've seen today. The algae doesn't hurt him. It's actually something that occurs very frequently in the wild, which is why we've let him continue to grow the algae on his shell. So we've gone through all the turtles that we care for here at the Burpee Museum, and we've talked a lot about the differences between them. But all these turtles are also going to have things in common. For one, they're all reptiles, so that means they're going to have three basic things in common. They're all going to have scaly skin, they're all going to lay eggs, and they're all going to be cold-blooded, which means that they can't actually control their temperature on their own. In order to get warm, they have to go bask out in the sun, and in order to cool off, they have to go hide in the shade. So you'll often see the turtles in the wild doing one of these things to regulate their own body temperature. They can't just sit somewhere like we do and be okay. They have to go seek out warmth and go seek out shade. Another thing they're all gonna have in common is very obviously their shells. Even though they're all going to look different, they all have shells and they all have different tails as well. They're going to be different sizes and shapes based on turtles and his is actually hidden away right at the back of his shell. So thank you guys for joining us today as we talked about the native turtles of Illinois. We do suggest that you do the activity that is going to be linked below. That way you guys can continue to learn about turtles in your area. And do be sure to check out the different videos in the Family Nature Adventure series. That way you guys can have so much fun outside learning about the natural world around you.